If you are concerned that someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, what would you do? If they came to you and shared their painful secret, what would you say? If you are the victim of domestic violence, where would you turn? The Wellspring is a qualified domestic violence service provider with staff that knows exactly how to help. Every minute, 20 people are victims of domestic violence. Someone you know could be a victim, a friend, family member, co-worker, neighbor, or someone you know in the community. Domestic and sexual violence can happen to anyone. Domestic violence isn't always physical. There are many different forms of domestic violence, including psychological, emotional, verbal, financial, physical, and sexual abuse. When a victim tells someone about the abuse, too often they don't get the information or support they need. It's more common for a victim to first confide in a friend or family member who may not know what to say or how to help. Offer these supportive words. I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid for your children. It will only get worse. I'm here for you. No one deserves to be abused. There are many aspects to understanding domestic violence. What are some signs? Are they afraid? What is their level of danger? Why do they stay? What are some resources they can assess for help? These and many other questions can be answered by a member of the Wellspring staff. The Wellspring can provide you with tools necessary to give you emotional support, including help for immediate and long-term planning. At Wellspring, if I didn't have them in my corner, I don't really know where I would have, how I would have ended up. Wellspring helped me tremendously, they really did. Just call Wellspring, I will help you all I can. I'm Sade. I'm Christine. I'm a mother, I'm a friend. I'm a daughter and I am a survivor of domestic violence. And I am a domestic violence survivor. I met him when uh, I was 14 years old, so um, it didn't start out bad. It um, actually was good in the very beginning, and slowly and gradually it turned into the jealousy and the isolation and the name calling. And over um, a period of time, it got physical with the slapping and the hair pulling and the pinching and the pushing. And um, I didn't understand that. I, I didn't understand that that was domestic violence because he would always come back and say, well, if you would not have acted this way or if you wouldn't have said something. So I, I thought it was my fault that he was doing the things he was doing. Over um, a period of time, I had four children with him. The uh, abuse and the jealousy and the control and the isolation and the sexual abuse, the financial abuse, the name calling um, continuously got worse uh, really on a daily basis. And he not only beat me, he also beat uh, our children as well. I was very afraid of him, they were very afraid of him. I stayed with him for 14 years. The very first time I left him, uh, my oldest daughter was nine months old. I left and went to a safe house. And of course he said, I love you, I need you, I will never do this to you again, please come home, please just come talk to me. So I did and he took my daughter from me and put her in the truck and I was not gonna let my daughter leave with him without me. So I went back and uh, for two weeks, um, he severely, severely beat me. My nose was broke, my ribs were cracked, uh, both eyes were black. I had bruises all over my body where he beat me, um, raped me multiple times, and told me then that if I ever left him again, he would kill me. I stayed until my oldest daughter was at this point nine years old. An incident had took place the day before, and um, whenever she got home that night, um, he asked me who had come up that day, and I explained to him that my mom had, and at that point, I was not allowed to see my mom, talk to my mom, go to my mom's or have my mom or anyone else come to my house without his permission. And he asked why and I had to tell him why. He proceeded to beat me and grab me by my hair and kept shoving my face under the water and he would snatch me back up and punch me some more and put my face back under the water. And he finally said, you go outside by the shed and you get the two by four. He said, I'm gonna break her. And I said, no. So I didn't do it. And whenever he got out of the bathtub, he proceeded to beat me and Ashley to probably two, three o'clock in the morning. 
and um, he beat me so bad I, I crawled to the couch and I pulled myself up on the couch and I closed my eyes and I said, Dear God, if I live through tonight, he will never do this to me and my babies again. So I did exactly what he said until he went to work the next day and I left. I eventually went back to my mom's house and he showed up on May 24th at my mom's house, laid in the field all night long and waited till the next morning. Um, came through my mama's door with a loaded rifle in his hand. I took off running and I ran and jumped in mama's car and went to leave and he started shooting up the car. I finally got out and got away from him and went to a neighbor's house and uh, we called 911. After I left, he had turned the gun on my mom. I didn't realize at the moment, but he had shot me twice in the back and he had turned the gun on my mom and he had shot her once in the back and killed her and held uh, three of our four children hostage. I was 17 years old when I met my abuser and I was living in Warren, Arkansas and I graduated in 2004 and I moved here to Monroe, Louisiana to be with him. After two years being in the relationship, you know, that's when he first got physical with me and um, after that it was a lot of verbal abuse, um, emotional abuse and eventually I started living life like it was normal until I started working at the Wellspring and I did my first intake and that's when I realized that I was a battered woman and it was a very big eye opener for me and I really want to change my lifestyle that I was living. I really want to be the example for my daughter to show her this is not what love is supposed to be and our relationship was getting just terrible going downhill to the point where I kept trying to get out of the relationship, but he was not allowing that. So it came to a point where it was, he kidnapped me by gunpoint. When I realized that um, I was a battered woman after working with the Wellspring, I would, I had, I was a little stronger. You know, I was like, you know, I didn't want to accept that type of abuse anymore. You know, I was very, really standing up for myself, something that I wouldn't normally do. You know, and um, he could tell, he could, he could see that in me that I was being more stronger than I was before, and that was something that he did not like. And so, you know, I was very adamant about either you're gonna change or the relationship is gonna be over. And so, of course, they act like they're gonna change, but really they, you know, eventually go back to the same old ways. And so I was just fed up with the relationship and I wanted to just end for it to be over. Anytime if we get into uh, an argument or anything like that, or if it gets so bad to where he would get physical, he would always take my daughter from me. You know, he would leave the home and take her because he knows that, you know, I'm going to call, I'm going to do what I can to find out she's safe and she's okay. So he would use her in that aspect to try to get to me. I was always um, the girl who had the strong personality, who I always stood up for what's right, who didn't go for the bullying type, and especially from a man. I was that I was that woman that was, if a man ever put his hands on me, oh, I would do this and I would do that, until I was actually in that situation. Because I used to always sit back and ask myself, why did women stay with men that were abusive? Until I was in that situation, I realized certain, there's several reasons on why you stay financial. Uh, you might, you feel like you have nowhere else to go you want to stay around for the kids. You know, there's so many different reasons. You love that person. So there's so many reasons on why you stay. But in the end, if you can kind of see, if you have a breakthrough to see, okay, well, life still goes on even when this relationship is over. You have to start choosing yourself. You can't lose yourself, because that's what I did. I lost myself in that relationship. I lost who I was. You know, just as a person, a daughter, a mother, I lost myself. And that's why I stayed so long in that relationship until I was actually tired and wanted to get out because I had to be that good example for my daughter because I would just couldn't live with myself if she grew up to date that type of man that her father was to me. That's something that I just don't want to see happen. So I had to be not only strong for myself but for my daughter too. I am better than that person I was before I met him. I'm actually a lot more stronger than I was before. I would always tell myself that, you know, I want to get back to the, you know, old me, but I'm at a place now where I'm at a better me, so that's great. The situation by me being a staff member at the Wellspring and 
trying to help empower women to get out of abusive relationships or better themselves after an abusive relationship. At first I was embarrassed and I I had a lot of pride. I had a lot of co-workers to ask me that I need any help, that I need anything. I was always telling them, you know, no, no, and I really, really did need help. At Wellspring, if I didn't have them in my corner, I don't really know where I would have, how I would have ended up. <laughs>